A group of women who participated in the 1976 Soweto student uprisings have spoken on how they survived the traumatic detention at the John Forster Square police station. A documentary titled Surviving John Forster Square lays bare the brutal experiences of the nine struggle heroines many of us have not even heard much about. To hear more about this, we're joined by anti-apartheid activists Daphne Koza and Mahauta Mulefe, who's also the director and producer of the documentary. Uh, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much, Bome, for joining us on the Weekend Report. We hear so much about the men of June 16, 1976, and the images and the portrayal focusing on the men. And Mayor Daphne, I'd like to start with you. Let's talk a little bit about uh, um, some of your experiences and what you recall as you have been reminded of what actually transpired with this 120-minute documentary. Um, good morning, um, viewers. I think um, what I recall about June 16, I was actually uh, a participant, not as a student, because I was particularly in the founding of Black Consciousness um, uh, in 1970 when I was a student at the University of Zululand. So when June 16 erupted, I was, all, I was working for the uh, South African Council of Churches. Therefore, that was my start of the participation when basically we were providing students who were accosted by the police in the township when I lived at the uh, Methodist Youth Center, you know, giving them, handing them water when they were, you know, uh, thrown when uh, um, you, you know, the, 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 what is it, this thing which burns your eyes mm -hmm. was thrown at them. And um, uh, Mahauta, what are your memories uh, as you look back and recall what happened, especially as you reminded with the, the production of the documentary? Well, the, the documentary is based on women who were detained not only for 76 activities, but for their political activities in the Black Consciousness Movement from the 70s. So it is a mixture, uh, it's not only 76, we do have people from 76. And why we did it is because we want to highlight that women also struggle, they also sacrifice their lives. And we want women to tell their stories so that the world can know that they also sacrifice for this country. And, and what are some of the uh, sacrifices that you speak of? I mean, we, we so speak so much about uh, the men of, of the struggle and very little is known about the uh, reality on the ground behind bars for women. Women were also in the leadership. We, we should remember that the formation of SASO, 50% of the executive were women. We have women who have also contributed in many ways besides joining organizations, supporting the men, supporting their kids, and nothing is said about this. About this. So this is the beginning of telling that story of women because a li very little is said about women. So we thought we should pick up a, a few of them and show that they were also involved. Uh, the sacrifices, you know, like in prison, uh, during apartheid, people get tortured. The men, some were killed, but electrocution was for everybody, being beaten up and all that. And they came out with emotional and physical scars that they've carried for all these years. Met Daphne, the emotional and physical scars that have been carried for all these years are uh, feelings that one cannot uh, just erase as uh, they, they crop up, as especially you're reminded um, from time to time about your experiences. Talk to us more about your emotional journey and uh, how it's perhaps enabled you uh, today. I think... Um uh, I'm very proud and grateful to Mahauta for having uh, done this documentary. I, one of the um, emotional pains uh, I experienced then was about John Foster. Um, stories about John Foster's, I don't think that they've been adequately told, especially in respect of women. I, I, 
I always think of John Foster Square um, as as a torture chamber, and a lot has been said about men being tortured in John Foster Square, but I don't think that um, a lot has been said about the torture of women in John Foster Square. For instance, I was detained. Uh, then I was working for the SACC, and they fetched me, the security policeman, in a limousine with the, the old South African flag from there, and I was detained for very hectic and brutal in, uh, interrogation at John Foster for about three hours. And th the main thing was that they were trying to extricate from me in very um, vicious uh, interrogatory uh, manners, which were, you know, were affect, which affected me psychologically, because they were tracing my movements um, uh, with Tenjuem Tinzo. That was the main setting of the interrogation. But what I found very, um, uh, you know, traumatizing was at the point, you know, this, I was sitting. In, they put me on, on a chair, and I was surrounded by about six very hefty Africana men, you know, very muscular. They were wearing khaki shorts and khaki uh, uh, shirts, and they actually partially opened it, their chest so that I could see their, their hairy chest as part of the intimidation. But what I found traumatic was that uh, before one of them, you know, was they, they were using abusive language and pushing me around, and one of them actually stabbed his cigarette on on my breast and he said, you know, kafir mate, um, if you're not talking, we, I'm going to burn your kafir nipple. And then one of them held me by my neck, you know, the, the, the scruff of my neck, and they pushed me towards the window, and they, you know, he pushed my head down. It was on the, uh, I think, on the ninth floor of John Foster, the popular interrogation place. And as the way, he, he, he opened the window and made me look down, hold me by, you know, both his heavy hands on my neck. And he said to me, look down there. You black consciousness people, you say we, we kill people on this floor. And like you, 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 you are, you're busy saying uh, we threw Timor. I remember quite distinctly they were saying to me as, as my head was being, you know, held down on this, um, the, we, we pushed Timor. And he said to me, if you don't tell us about your movements with Tenjum Tinzo, I am not going to push you down, but you will jump down like Timor. And, 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 and land with your head on the, on the streets. So that was very traumatic for me. And, you know, um, they continued interviewing. But I think the trauma of that day is that whereas they brought me in their limousine, when they let me go from John Foster, when I got outside of John Foster, the way I was mentally, you know, dear Makar, I stood on the entrance of John Foster and I couldn't remember which way, to, whether to turn left or to turn right in order to walk back to the SACC. You know, that was the greatest trauma I experienced. Mm -hmm. And yeah, John Foster was a torture chamber. And I think it's befitting for women, especially during this month of August, that the, the children of today, especially, not even people who participated in Machauta and the rest, uh, but the children of today, they need to know what women went through at that torture chamber, which is John Foster, and their role in the liberation of this country. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, some really heart-wrenching descriptions there as you speak about your horrors. Uh, Mahauta, you also had long spells in prison. You were also a target of the apartheid security, especially with your political activism, being a, a, a pupil of the Morris Isaacson High School. Talk to us about how you narrate your experiences in this 120-minute documentary. Well, well, when I was detained, I was already working at the BPC. Uh, I, I, I had been kicked out of university because of my um, participation in the pro-freedom rally. So 
Uh, they detained me after looking for me for a very, very long time. Um, and then I was pregnant. Uh, during interrogation, I got miscarried. And because we were, we were detained in solitary confinement, we didn't know what each one of us experienced. Only now when I'm doing the documentary, I find out that there were there also other women who also had miscarriages because you get kicked, they electrocute you, they make you stand for a long time, they beat you up. So I, I experienced that. And now when you are talking to women, you find that they've never spoken about their experiences. And it, it, it becomes so traumatic because we are opening old wounds. And uh, uh, very lastly, before we let you go, Mahauta, tell us uh, about this uh, documentary, when uh, it can be viewed and, and how to access it, and perhaps some of the cast members that are within it. We have uh, people like Bonilem Kabela, we have Perli Tuli, uh, we have Lorraine, uh, Lele Ab Abraham, Joyce Dipale, Malishane Mokwena, um, uh, Dr. Unjini Punen and Daphne Koda. We have a lot. And then we've also interrogated their, their, their kids uh, about their experience. Most of them were not born, but we asked them to make a reflection as family members of the role of their mothers in, in the whole thing. And then some community members. Uh, what, what, what is happening now is that we, it's only by private viewing. We, it's people that have been invited on the 16th and then also on the 26th. But uh, as soon as we've shown it to different people, then we'll decide what we are going to do with it. Uh, but we're getting very good response. People are asking for it. Um, so that is what is happening. It's by invitation for now. Very well. Thank you so much uh, uh, for your time. Uh, Anti-apartheid activist Daphne Koza and Mahaute Mulefe, who is also the director and producer of the documentary titled Surviving John Foster Telling. And speaking of the horrors that women experience during this time, uh, that time, of course, uh, we often hear so much about the stories of men and very little about the horrors that women experience during an oppressive time in South Africa's history page. A uh, moment to reflect in this 120-minute documentary. Uh, hopefully we'll get to hear more about how the, the general public gets to view it um, as, of course, we, we learn from the histories and perhaps improve when it comes to a new South Africa. We